Hi, Ray Moran here today to talk again about the Valuation 20 event with Ben Elder. Ben has been chair of the Tangible Asset Board of the International Valuation Standards Council, International Director of Valuation for the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors, and someone I really enjoy sharing travel stories with around the world. Ben, welcome. It's great to have you here. Uh, uh, we'd love to get your perspective upon the four main themes of the Valuation 20 and how much they overlap with the themes of the G20. Can you comment a bit about that? Yeah, sure, Ray, and great to be here, and thanks for your time, and likewise, always enjoy the conversation. Um, yeah, I think it's really important that we look at those four main themes that are kicking the B20 off. And, and the, the, the themes which I think are challenging to all valuers everywhere, in whether they're de dealing with tangible assets or plant machinery, business valuations, or even financial instruments now. Uh, and they wrote, revolve around the, the transparency and the availability of data, which impacts on the quality of the decisions which are made. Uh, it, it looks at some of the livelihood um, issues. Uh, and that's one of the areas I'm particularly interested in, in this, uh, uh, th th this area of um, restoration of livelihoods, particularly where compulsory acquisition is involved uh, in, in many parts of the world. And of course, we can't talk about any valuations at the moment without touching on the ESG issues and the uh, climate change in the new financial reporting regulations, which are um, very much uh, on, on the way in uh, as we speak. Uh, and then finally strengthening the profession and the provision of uh, qualified valuers uh, uh, around the globe because uh, in many developing nations that's a real stumbling block to um, good decision making um, because the professionals just aren't trained at this point in time uh, and I think we've got a role to help um, uh, in, in all of those areas right I'm amazed, Ben, at how much uh, those themes overlap with what we do every day as valuers. Perhaps just going back over those four again on data transparency and availability, you know, just the changes I've seen alone in terms of technology, innovation, and data that crosses borders. Yeah, it's amazing how this topic is just everywhere in our careers, isn't it? Very much so. And uh, again, I think. Uh... Um, see, see my grey hair I've been about for a little bit of time uh, and uh, I think when I started uh, doing valuations um, information was, was king whereas I think now knowledge is king uh, and really the, uh, the important part is that transition from information into knowledge and how that actually uh, happens but it's easy to forget that many countries don't have the same access to information uh, as perhaps we are privileged to in more developed nations uh, and uh, that, that, that process is still to be undertaken and I think part of this V20 work will be to highlight the, um, uh, the processes and the better provision of information or the better pr provision of information can make to be better decisions and if we get better decisions which underpin the G20, uh, then V20 will have fulfilled its uh, its mission. Yeah, absolutely. And back in the day, my hair used to be red, and I still have a Hewlett Packard 12C calculator that uh, I'll look at for amusement from time to time. But uh, on that second theme of livelihood, land use, and habitat, uh, that's just a fascinating one because you can get into uh, international land measurement standards and some of the UN habitat issues that are out there, can't you? Absolutely, and the UN goals, uh, sustainability goals, and uh, that, that, that whole area of um, uh, land uh, registration uh, and areas, uh, the vast areas of the world, if I recall correctly, last time I read it was about 70% of the world is not registered. So um, there the are vast tracts of unregistered land there. It doesn't mean to say anybody doesn't own it or, or occupy it or use it. It just means it's not formally registered in a system that perhaps the, we as Westerners would expect to see. Uh, and then trying to work out what the additional risk is, uh, talking in valuation terms. Um, but also that area means that the, the, the people who occupy those lands um, 
probably don't have access to the same financial systems that, that we do. Uh, and uh, again, there's a, a great gender issue in, in those, some of those countries as well, particularly around um, uh, female entrepreneurs and how they can access uh, finance to develop some of the great businesses that, uh, uh, that, that they have the ideas for and want to develop. And some of this work in this area will liberate um, enormous amounts of some of the poorest people in the world. Uh, and I really think that's an important um, focus that the V20 should have in supporting G20 initiatives. Oh, absolutely. And that third theme of ESG or environmental, social and governments really touches everything we do within real property, plant machinery and business valuation, particularly the need for consistent metrics and measurements that we can incorporate as well as standards and transparency, don't they? It certainly does. And then it overlaps back into the, the, the first um, uh, theme of, uh, of data and, and transparency. Uh, and here, uh, the ESG. I just wish that perhaps um, when we talk about ESG, people would put a full stop after the E and after the S and after the G because they're all different measurements and yet they tend to sort of get lumped into one uh, one, one thought process. Um, uh, and probably the most difficult one of those is the S, uh, the social uh, element. And actually, that, that overlaps back into the livelihood uh, element of thing two that we've just been discussing. So uh, they are all interlinked, but that uh, ESG agenda has moved um, remarkably over the last uh, 24 months. And uh, uh, obviously, the regulators are starting to require additional information um, in those uh, uh, under those headings. Uh, and the valuers are the people who can provide that. Uh, we, we are the, the eyes and the ears of most um, decision makers uh, on projects and therefore we've got a real part to play. And if we don't pick up the bat and run with it, um, then the entrepreneurs and the decision makers will go elsewhere. Uh, but valuers are really well placed, uh, but it probably needs some additional training uh, and upskilling uh, to make sure that we can meet the real challenges which are in front of us. Oh, I, I totally agree. And I think regarding the E or environmental, where we all understand the impact of green buildings and values and within business valuations, you know, how they may or may not affect an actual valuation as a plant machinery value, where I think of infrastructure and alternative energy projects, uh, which are just a, a booming uh, niche these days, and it's really one of interest to all of us. So it touches again everything that we do. But uh, we'll have more fun talking about this uh, in October. Yeah. And on the last one, one of my favorites is actually strengthening professional capacity because it goes on to everything from standards to education to diversity uh, worldwide, quite frankly. Yeah, absolutely. And again, uh, there, there, there are many countries who um, don't fully recognize the um, the power which is contained in a valuation and, or a valuer uh, and uh, getting that process in place so that the valuations are trusted um, by all parties uh, and to do that you've got to build in the professionalism you've got to build in the independence of the valuer uh, and the objectivity of the valuer so that the, they can demonstrate that they are um, maintaining and reporting uh, in a consistent way, uh, which builds that trust in the information which they are imparting. Uh, and that's a real uh, challenge. And it's not, uh, it's, we've not been completely successful everywhere in the world. Uh, and even in developed nations, there are some challenges to those, uh, uh, to, to those fields and making sure that we can nurture and build on the talent that of people who can become valuers. They might not be valuers at the moment. Uh, they may be engaged in other professions um, and uh, certainly uh, some very bright um, uh, academics involved in the process, uh, particularly in some of the financial instruments valuations that we can uh, capture and bring those uh, people into this really important valuation 
um, I nearly said family, but profession is probably a better word to, uh, uh, to use. Sometimes it feels like a family, Ben, and I couldn't agree more about the need, particularly to bring younger people into our profession. Here in the U.S., uh, where I work primarily, uh, we have a, a large need to reach out and really bring in those people and demonstrate the opportunities of a career in valuation and what they can do, because it's a, a booming niche right now. Uh, but. Yeah. But these are just wonderful topics and I'm looking forward to further discussions uh, at the actual V20 event. Ben, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and time with us. I hope you come back and we get a chance to talk more about this. It's always a pleasure and uh, yes, anytime. <laughs>